Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting flower droplets and I'm going to be sipping on my vanilla chai tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, purple violet, and fire red. And of course, you can switch up those colors too, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have two brushes, a half inch wide flat bristle brush, and a number one round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and the brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are red, yellow, white, uh, brown, and purple. So I'm gonna use all my colors on my palette. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself two colors. One is gonna be a tan color and one's gonna be like a maroon color. I'm gonna be doing a gradient of sorts with a tan type of color over on the right-hand side and it's gonna um, get darker and darker until it's like a dark maroon type of color over here on the left hand side. So I'm going to show you how I got to those two colors because I've already pre-mixed them on my palette. So this color in through here, this tan color is going to be made up of a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, a good amount of brown, some more brown in there, and then a little bit of white. And then I just start spinning it together. Let me turn this this way so we don't lose any of my maroon here. And then I just start spinning it together. That's a little bit too red for me, so I'm gonna add more yellow and a little bit of white. And I'm just going for kind of a nice neutral tan type of color. You can make yours lighter or darker than mine. Wherever your preference is, is totally fine. Then once I've got that color done, I'm gonna wash my brush so I can pre-mix the other color because I'm going to want to have them both ready when I start that background. So I'm just washing and drying my brush. So this color in through here, this maroon color, I got to that with the purple and the red. So the red will really easy, easily take over. So I'm just going to add a little bit of red into my purple. You don't need to use all of either of the colors, but it's going to be a little bit heavier on the purple and then once I get it into a nice maroon kind of color I add just a teeny tiny bit of white paint into it to lighten it up just a little bit so that's a little bit too light so I'll, I'll add back in a little bit of the red and the purple and that's looking pretty good to me and that's going to be my color in through here so now I'm going to wash and dry my brush because I want to start with the um with the tan color the lighter side of the gradient which I guess we could have made our maroon first but <laughs> so we didn't have to wash our brush twice but I'm washing and drying my brush and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with that tan color and I'm going to be putting that all over on the right hand side of my canvas. I'm going to have it kind of like in an arcing type of um, transition into the maroon color so I will as I get towards the center of the canvas I'll have more of like a 
well, I'm using it now, but kind of an arcing type of brush stroke. The brush stroke really isn't super important at this point in time, but as I'm getting into the area where I want the two colors to start to blend in with one another, this arcing motion will help me just to kind of um, plan out the gradient in the, the round type of shape for the flower. So that's pretty good. I got it coming down and through here. I'm not concerned about a full coverage at this point because I'm going to have so much other stuff on top of this. Right now I'm picking up my tan plus my maroon color on my brush at the same time. I'm going to get those two colors to intermingle with one another. You don't have to um, get a perfect gradient at this point, just trying to get them to start talking with one another, living together. I'm going to pick up some more of the tan plus the maroon color on my brush and then that's going to be the last time that I pick up the tan. The rest of the way I'm just going to pick up the maroon color without washing my brush. So right now I'm just picking up the maroon color. I'm just going to get that to blend in through here and I'm going to bring it all the way back to this back right hand corner. Again, it does not have to be a perfect blend at this point. We're really just kind of looking to get the colors on here, start them intermingling with one another. And while it's kind of still wet like this, if, if these, like, I call them cut marks, annoy you like they annoy me, <laughs> what I do is I just make sure that I have a nice, long, continual brush stroke, and that will help to avoid those kind of um, stopping points in the brush stroke. And then I just kind of keep going back and forth until I feel like I've got it blended as much as I want to. And then we're going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be doing the first layer of our flower and we're gonna finish the background area. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are the tan we created, the maroon we created, we're gonna use brown, and also we're gonna create another color. Um, I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to, you know, take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm in essence gonna be doing is I, I'm gonna finish, there's a, gonna be a little piece of my background showing here that I will just make all nice and soft and out of focus. And then we're gonna start the out of focus um, flower petals. They're going to be very soft and faint and we're going to just have it as if the flower is just really blooming. Um, so we'll be using directional brush strokes. But I'm going to make one more custom color before we start this. So this color we'll just call a light peach type of color. So I've got it right here. What I did was I took some of my tan and I added a tiny bit of yellow, a teeny tiny bit of red, which would make orange, and then a little tiny bit of white also. So what I'm in essence doing is adding a light orange type of color to my tan. That's a little bit too dark, so a little bit more white. I always like to proceed with caution so that way I don't um, make it too vibrant or too subtle. So there we go, that's working pretty well for me. So that's gonna be my peach type of a color. So I'm gonna use that first. I just have a little bit of that on my brush and I'm gonna finish up this area in through here. So I have a little bit of that light peach color and I'm just gonna start to um, use this circular type of brush stroke. I'm gonna intermingle this color with my original background color. So I've got it started in through here. Now I'm gonna pick up some of my tan that I had. I'm really just looking for a nice soft coverage for this right area or the right side of the canvas. So you can use a combination of both those colors. You could start with the tan, then you can pick up a little bit of the peach, whatever um, is visually working for you. This is just intended to look out of focus. I'm gonna bring it in probably about uh, a fifth of the way into my canvas, so maybe about four inches or so. Um, but you could certainly bring yours in farther or less, whatever you want. This will be dictate kind of how far out the, the tips of your petals to your flower will go. So that's why I'm bringing it just a little, little further 
you know, into the canvas. Maybe it's a quarter of the way, something like that works. And then what I'm gonna do is without washing my brush, I'm gonna start back in this left hand um, region of my canvas and I'm gonna start to splay out these varying colors that are going to imply that kind of the center of my flower is in here, it's darker, and then it's going to get lighter and lighter as it goes out towards the edges of, um, of this out of focus area and overlap it. This is gonna be all kind of like rounded edges as we um, merge into this area over here, but we will be doing another step that's gonna identify these petals a little bit more. Right now, we're just gonna be going for a nice big freeing type of brush stroke. So I'm starting over here. The colors I'm gonna be alternating through are brown, um, this maroon color, my peach and my tan. I'm gonna start with brown and maroon on my brush at the same time. I didn't wash my brush because I love my colors to intermingle with one another. So I'm just kind of starting with these two colors, brown and magenta, just so I can kind of get myself an area where I want these petals to start to splay out of. You can use a good amount of paint, don't fear, um, the quantity of paint at this point because we're going to be like I said doing many layers on top of this so I just picked up some of my um, maroon color to get this to just kind of blend in I'm going pretty heavy so I can cover up a lot of that um, any streakiness that I might have detected or had in my background color so this is going to help to um, accomplish that and then as I come up in through getting away from the center. I'm gonna start introducing the lighter colors, but first I wanna kind of give myself areas that might separate some of these petals. So I still just have the magenta and brown on my brush right now, and I'm gonna give myself these darker type of streaks throughout this area. And I'm really, now I'm not using a lot of paint on my brush so I can have these soft edges to it. Whereas in three I was going for pretty good coverage. Now I'm just looking for some soft edges. So I don't need a lot of paint on my brush right now. Just picked up a little bit more of the um, maroon color and I'm just gonna kind of bring this out in through here. So right now just kind of looking for those, maybe the little darker areas that are gonna separate my petals from one another. And again, just picking up my maroon right now, not doing anything other than just kind of thinking about where I might want the petals to, to have their almost shadowy type of area in between them. And then once I've got that on there, maybe I'll put a little bit more of this um, maroon color in through here, just make sure this is a nice transition from the, from the dark to the lighter. So now that I've got that done, I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm gonna start picking up my tan color. This was the original color that we had um, from the background, and I'm gonna just start intermingling this in between those um, these sections. So you can use a combination of maybe the maroon and your tan. If you're feeling like the, the tan is a little bit too light, you can certainly use both those colors at the same time. In a few minutes, I'm going to introduce some of that peach color as well. But right now I'm focusing more with the tan and the, and the maroon color. So I can get these to just kind of dissipate, give myself some nice, um, out of focus type of transitions from one color section to the next. And now I'm still just kind of using a little bit of that tan. I think I'm gonna pick up some of that peach now as well, just to give myself a little bit more of a vibrant kind of color, bringing it up in through here. And I'm not washing my brush, so this way these colors can intermingle with one another. As I come out into this area where it's gonna start to kind of touch that background, the, uh, the background area, you can start to almost round some of these edges a little bit. And I, I'm, I just picked up some of my tan color. You can certainly use any combination of the tan, the maroon, the um, peach, in order to get this, um, this softness kind of happening around the edges. But I'm trying to not 
over blend it where it's all one solid color. So if you if you feel the need to to thin out your paint a little bit, you could certainly do that. But I'm just going to kind of rub out like these little circular type of edges along some of these areas to imply the corners of the petals. And I'm really just kind of rubbing it so I have these soft edges which look like they're out of focus. We'll be doing more detail to it later, but just along this edge is where I'm trying to give myself a little bit more information, like maybe I just put a little bit of the peach on my brush to get um, maybe a petal kind of in through here, but I do want to make sure that those edges are really soft so they give the idea of it being out of focus. So if you have to pick up some of that tan or some of the peach just to make sure that it blends in a little bit along those edges, then feel free to do that. And then as I'm coming down in through here, I'm going to do the same thing, just kind of maybe a little bit of the maroon plus a little bit of my um, tan color. I'll get these to um, merge in here in, in just a minute, but right now just concentrating on some of these out of focus edges that um, I'm desiring. So now that I've got, I've got a few popped out over those edges, now I'm just going to concentrate on these areas, um, just intermingling them a little bit so they're blended in a little bit. And this is intended, this entire flower, except for a couple of strategic petals that we're gonna be putting in a minute, is intended to look out of focus. So as you're going through this process, don't feel the need to make it, anything look really um, with a lot of detail. I'm just trying to make everything kind of look like it's blending in together. Again, we are going to have another step that will help to identify some of these petals a little bit more, but right now just kind of going for this really soft type of look. The, um, the, the maroon and the tan on my brush right now are gonna help me get this little um, soft edge down here as if this bottom petal is kind of just leaning over. I just picked up a little bit more of my magenta, or I, I'm crossing over between magenta and maroon. They're the same color on my palette, but I, I think I'm saying both of those colors, but I, it's only one color on my palette, this dark reddish purpley color, <laughs> but I might be calling it two different things. I'm just kind of getting this to transition. So what I've done is I just kind of made that curve go down towards the bottom of my canvas. And then I would just kind of fiddle with this a little bit more, but I'm not gonna labor over it too much. I do know that again, during my next um, step, I will be getting these areas to blend in a little bit more with one another, getting my edges to be softer or um, more visible. So once you've got this done, you know, play with it as much as you want. Again, just kind of giving myself the hint of some, um, some edges of some petals over in through here, but not doing a whole heck of a lot. And then once I've got that done, I've got a nice kind of splay coming into this area in through here. Once I've got that, oh, maybe a little, maybe a little bit more of this um, peachy and maroon up in through here. Just give a little more, a little more life up into here. But once I've got this done, I'm going to um, wash and dry this brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be finishing our flower petals. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I'm gonna be using all the colors that we started with. <laughs> so we've got brown, we've got our maroon, we've got our peach, we've got our tan. Now we're gonna introduce white. I'll use some white. I'm also gonna use purple. So we'll make like a nice lavender color and we'll use yellow as well with a nice light yellow. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to bring two or three of these petals in focus or closer to the viewer. Like we're seeing the side of them, they're brought closer to the viewer and this is gonna be, one of them is gonna be where we're gonna have the little water droplets sitting on. So I'm gonna have mine maybe my in focus one kind of in through here i'll probably have another one up above it a little bit and then maybe one of the a third one coming up in through here you could certainly have yours wherever you'd like to but that's um kind of where i'm going to start this step with is giving myself the information as to where i want those in focus ones to be and then um maybe doing any kind of 
identifying marks to separating any of the other ones, but most of the other ones are going to just be out of focus and soft, so they can certainly almost ride the way that they are right now, but I'll do a little bit more finessing on them to so they look finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a light yellow color. So I'm going to use yellow and just a little bit of white in it. I don't want this to be really yellow, 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 but I definitely want it to have um, white in it to have a nice softness and I want it to look yellow. So I don't want to bring it too close to white, still having some yellow in there. So this looks pretty good to me. And then what I do so this brush is in control, I like to wipe it on the side of my palette and almost flatten it, like squish the paint in the bristles. So now I have a nice controlled kind of thin edge. I'm going to decide where I want um, this petal to kind of be and I've actually kind of got a nice natural light spot in through here so that I would definitely recommend for you to utilize these lighter spots that you might have naturally had from the last step as your in focus one. So I kind of see one in through here. So I'm just going to use a little bit of paint and just kind of get a nice soft edge um, going for this particular petal. It doesn't need to be really or really firm or anything like that. I just really kind of want to give myself the insinuation or the implication as to where this in focus one is going to be. And then I'm going to um, do another one. So I've got a little bit of my light yellow on here. I think I'm going to have the next one up at least maybe an inch and a half to two inches above this one. So I, because I'm going to put my water droplets on this one. So I want to have enough room above it um, so so it'll fit in there so maybe something like this will give me this one in through here and I'm giving mine a nice arc so it looks like we're seeing these from the side and then I'm just going to kind of bring it back into the center right here and then I might I think I'm going to have a third one kind of up here but maybe this one's not going to be as in focus from the side maybe this one we're going to see part of the interior of it so I'm going to bring this one maybe way up in through here and then I think this one I'm going to kind of utilize this as the dark area inside the petal maybe we'll see a little bit more of the inside of this one so just bring this down in this direction and then maybe we'll see the exterior edge of it somewhere over in through here. So that kind of identifies where I want my in focus ones to be. Now I just need them to blend in with the rest. So I'm going to pick up some of that peach color without washing my brush, a little bit of that peach color and my maroon color. So peach and maroon without washing my brush is going to get this to kind of blend in with this darker area as it's receding into the center of the flower. And then again, I'm just gonna kind of maybe uh, widen this or just get it to be whatever intensity that I want. So just kind of keep adding the, the peach, maybe a little bit of the light yellow in order to get this to be nice and in focus, but it doesn't have to be, you know, 100% straight lines. I just want it to kind of pop out a little bit like that. And then I'll do the same thing with the other one. So some of my my um, maroon plus a little bit of peach is going to get these two to just kind of fade into the center of the flower and then just kind of um, blend it as it's going towards this little tip in through here. And then this one up in through here, same thing, a little bit of peach and my um, maroon just along that lighter edge in order to get it to to blend in but still give a kind of almost a, a crisp kind of look to the edge because I have that light undercoat it certainly helps to make that stand out and then if I needed to adjust those edges anymore I'm going to put a little bit of white paint on my brush right now just to give myself a little kind of highlight on this curve where it is kind of um my, I think maybe looking towards the sunlight the most. So a little bit of white on my dirty brush is allowing me to give this little beautiful highlight on the edge of these um, petals, maybe a tiny bit in through here. That's going to bring it a little bit more in focus for those, for those particular ones. Now I want to get them to blend in with the rest. And um, also I want to add some purpley type of hues to the flower as well. So I'm washing and drying my brush because uh, I want I want to get that lightness off of my brush so I can kind of start back um, making sure that this is 
um, transitioning well. I just picked up some of the, the maroon to get the center of this particular petal to um, blend in a little bit better. I didn't want that to be too um, too separate of color, so I'm just getting it a little bit darker as it's transitioning into the center of the flower here. Same thing with the edges of these guys. Just a little bit more of that, uh, the, uh, the magenta color, maroon color on my brush. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start making sure that I've got some extra um, identity to any of these petals that I want. I don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot um, for the rest of this step, other than I'm gonna intermingle a little bit of light purple. I'm gonna identify some, maybe put a little bit more peach up in these ones to show a little bit more sunshine, and then maybe identify some of these, um, put a little bit of lightness on some of these out of focus ones, and then maybe give this a little bit more of a curve. So I have the, um, the maroon color on my brush right now. So I'm just gonna kind of let that work its way off of my brush, just kind of scrubbing it in any areas that I think could, could benefit from having it. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make myself a lavender color. So I've got my purple in through here. I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white paint to it. So this is gonna give me this beautiful light lavender color. I can use that as an, an additional tone to my petals. So very little bit of paint on my brush. When I do this step, I'm going to be using this lavender, but I'll also at times pick up some of my white, I'll pick up some of my light yellow. So I'm gonna be utilizing a variety of colors, but I'll show you how this is gonna benefit me. So I have the lavender on my brush right now. If I want this area of this petal to kind of pop out and make it look like it's um, got some volume to it. I can utilize that lavender. I just put a tiny bit of water on my brush as well, and this is going to allow me to give this entire area a little bit of an additional hue of color that will allow it to look like it is popping out a little bit more. I'm gonna just make sure that I blend it in, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my peach as well. So I just picked up a touch of my peach as well. So if I want to um, add any, any edges to more out of focus um, petals, I can put that peach on my brush, maybe a little bit of my, um, my maroon color as well to get them to blend in and just give myself some additional softness to this big petal that is just kind of flopping over, that is out of focus. You can even move your brush in various directions as the paint is drying, so that way it'll give it um, a softness to it and it'll allow it to blend in. Because I used water on my brush during the application process, it will turn a little bit darker as it dries. When you have water in the equation on your brush, it will look a little bit foggy when it's wet and then it will dry a little bit darker. So I, as I go through this process, I am familiar with that. So I know for me when I do it that although this looks a little bit um, foggy, it will turn out to be a little bit darker and more muted as it dries. And then as I go towards any of these other areas. This is looking pretty good down and through here. I'm, you know, in my head, I'm thinking this is the way that that petal is going. So I'm just gonna work my way around. As I go into here, I think I wanna put a little bit of my peach plus a touch of white on my brush to soften maybe um, a little bit of this petal on the outside in through here. So again, I'm thinking all of these are out of focus. So as I go through this process, I'm concentrating on giving them soft edges, making this one my, my dominant one that sticks out, and then all the other edges I want to just kind of fade into the background, not have this, the, I don't want them to steal the show. So as I'm doing this, I'm just concentrating on getting my edges to, to blend in, maybe put a little bit of this lavender color here and there. I just picked up a little bit more lavender to throw in here and just getting all of these other 
areas throughout the flower to be nice and soft. Maybe this one's gonna get a nice light edge to it. I'll pick up a little bit of the lavender. Maybe we'll put um, the lavender coming out in through Oops, we need a little bit more on my brush if we want it to actually show. I think my I think my paint dried out a little bit. So I'm just making myself a little bit more here on the fly. So I've got it on my brush now. So I'm going to put maybe a little bit in through here, maybe with a little bit of that maroon color. So you can really steer this into whatever visual preference is is working for you. Maybe you really love this lavender color and you want to put it in a bunch of different places. So if it's on your brush, feel free to just explore, you know, adding it to these soft edges of these petals, making these look like they're out of focus, just rubbing it in, giving these soft edges to anything that might be sticking out over here. Maybe we've got a little bit up in this vicinity, up and through here. I'm really just um, expending the, the lavender that's on my brush right now. I'll come back and make sure that all of these are um, well, um, blended and stuff but I'm digging the lavender that's on my brush so I'm going to just kind of maybe bring it some maybe I'll bring a little bit of it in um, this area back here I think I'm going to put a little bit more purple on my brush so less lavender more purple to get into this little dark part of the interior of the flower in through here so just have fun with how um, your experiencing the the dark colors I just put some of the maroon plus brown on my brush the color changes when I'm doing these out of focus type of um, paintings can be quite extensive I just kind of go through them and as I'm feeling one particular area I may add that you know a new color without even thinking about it but I'm washing and drying my brush right now I'm feeling like I'm a little overloaded with um, the colors so I just washed and dried my brush I want to kind of finish up these edges over here and I didn't want too much of that darkness on it so I'm going to go in for um, a little bit of my light yellow right now I just need to mix a little bit more on my palette here so a little bit of that light yellow and not a lot on my brush I want to kind of lighten up some of these edges in through here so they look like they've got a little bit of sunshine on them so a little bit of that was a little bit too much um, a little bit of yellow and white and I just kind of rinsed my brush off so I can soften this up a little bit mixing around on these edges in through here I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my peach and maybe a little bit of that maroon just to get this to soften and look like it's out of focus so that's that's going to be the the name of the game is just getting these um, rounded edges as they're meeting that background to get them to look nice and out of focus and layering layering always helps when you're when you're trying to attempt an out of focus um, type of look to it so don't feel that if you didn't get it on the first shot I just picked up a little bit of the maroon if you didn't get it on the first shot don't feel like it's over you can always just kind of keep coming back adding little bits of the highlights and the shadows here and there and just until you you just keep kind of playing with it until you've got the appearance that you that you're striving for and again I was just going for some nice in focus a couple of in focus ones like I want to work on that one just a little bit more the edge of it I feel like I lost it a little bit and then maybe a little bit more of my um, peach and my um, and my maroon up in through here maybe give this one a little bit more of a vibrant identity on this particular um, petal just so it looks like we've got a little bit more structure to the flower itself maybe a touch more of that magenta or um, maroon plus the peach in this little guy up in through here so again you can make them look as vibrant or as subtle as you want you're just the petals that are out of focus should you know kind of make sense and just have softness to them if you really want them to translate as being out of focus um, so you can have the colors vibrant but you'll want those colors to just kind of softly transition into one another and have soft edges to them and then I go for this for a little while I'll let it dry and then I will step back from it 
look at it from a distance, see if there's anything additional that I want to do to it. You might find that you love yours the way that it is. You might find that you want to add more to it. Right now, I'm just kind of flipping back and forth between my maroon, my peach, my light yellow um, to just soften all of these in between areas. And then once I feel like I've accomplished everything that I was hoping to accomplish, I am going to be switching to my small brush for the next step. So I'll probably fiddle with mine a little bit more, making sure that I've got everything um, soft and, and blended as much as I want. And then I will wash and dry, maybe put a little bit more lightness on these, on these edges over here. Um, and then I'll do that on camera. <laughs> I'm gonna put just a little bit more lightness in through here. Um, I had a lot and then I backed it off and then I feel like I want more. So just light edges maybe over in through here and then just wash and dry or put this large brush away. Take out your um, small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be doing the first step to our water droplets. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using white, brown, yellow, and my um, maroon color. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna draw myself a faint just kind of outline for the water drop. So what I'm gonna do two water drops. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add a touch of water into my white paint so it is nice and fluid and has a little bit of translucency to it. I'm gonna be utilizing that as the outline um, color for my water drops. You could really put them anywhere you want. I'm gonna pick um, this this petal to put mine on. I'm gonna have a bigger one. So I'm gonna have one that's about this big in through here. I like to kind of do my, um, the oval type of shape and one continual mark so that way I have a nice fluidity to it. Um, water droplets as they're sitting, they don't necessarily have to be perfect. They can have a little bit of wobble or warp to them. So if yours isn't perfect, don't worry about it. I'm doing kind of like these oval type of shapes. You can certainly kind of tweak them if you feel that you need to do a little bit of a tweak. I'm gonna do a little piece of the water kind of streaming or kind of attached to the petal like that. I'm gonna do that on both sides. So whatever I do to one um, water droplet, I'm gonna do to the other one as well. So I've got the outline done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up some brown paint and I'm gonna do a little bit of a brown kind of outline of the reflection that we're gonna be having. So I'm gonna start over on the left-hand side. I'm gonna bring this brown kind of over, oops, I need to put a little bit more on my brush. I'm gonna have it overlapping that white area just a little bit. So this is gonna kind of act as a little bit of a shadow down at the bottom of the water drop, and it's also gonna act as um, kind of like, um, a reflection of sorts of some sort of dark mark that's happening in the atmosphere around it. So I'm just utilizing it as a little bit kind of of an outline area where I'm going to be putting some colored parts. So it's almost like a, a an additional small, um, a smaller uh, oval that I'm putting in here. So I put that dark mark on the left hand side, maybe pull this up a little bit more on that left hand side too, and then give myself a similar type of um, oval like I did on the left one. So whatever I do on one, I'm gonna do on the other and I'm gonna just kind of repeat that. I'm gonna take this brown, I'm gonna rub it in just a little bit over here on the left hand side so it blends a little bit into that regular color. Gonna do the same thing over here on this one as well. And then I'm going to take that brown, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of, a, uh, of an underline to this little piece of um, water here. And then I'm gonna under or give myself a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of here as well. So this is just giving me a little bit of form to the um, water droplet. Gonna do the same thing over on the other side with a little bit of brown in through here and then a little bit of a dark area down at the bottom here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I wanna kind of concentrate the colors that are up in the flower. So I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow 
the um, not the light yellow, but the regular yellow that we um, that we have, and I'm going to rub it in over here on the left side of this one, overlapping it a little bit into that brown area as well. And I'm going to pull it probably almost maybe a third of the way into this section in through here. Then I'm going to, without washing my brush, I'm picking up some of my maroon color, and I'm going to put that over on the right hand side of this little um, brown section that we have designated and then I'll just kind of rub it out into that center area. I'm going to do the same thing over on the right hand side. So I've got a little bit of that maroon color. You can overlap the brown a little bit and then just kind of rub it out and get it to blend in. I'll just move my hand out of the way here. There we go. Blend into this center area in through here. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to um, just kind of get these colors to blend in just a little bit more. I'm picking up a little brown and the maroon just to get these this bigger section to blend in a little bit. The bigger section takes a little bit more finessing to, to blend in. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to wash and dry my brush because this is all I'm going to be doing for this step. I'm going to wash and dry my brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish up our, our little water droplets. I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using white, purple, brown, maybe a little bit of yellow. So what I'm in essence gonna do is just do a concentrated kind of little reflection of the flower. So I'm going to be using white with a little bit of purple on my brush. And I'm just gonna give these little kind of daisy type of petals coming out you can skew them a little bit they can be a little curved whatever you're feeling is totally fine this is just um, a small concentrated kind of appearance for the flower i'm going to do the same thing over here it's going to be kind of disguised a little bit with um, the reflection on the outside of the water droplet too so don't worry about this being perfect just kind of put in a little bit more white paint in through there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, wash my brush and I'm gonna put some brown paint on it so I can give the implication of the center of a flower, of the flower. So just little, little dots inside the center of that, little dots inside the center of this one over here. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put a little highlight or um, the, the, the top kind of glare on the on the water droplet. So I'm picking up some white paint and what I'm in essence gonna do is kind of outline the top and then fade that bright color in. I'm also gonna get it to kind of blend in with this colored area that we have. So I have white paint on my brush. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of lightness up in through there. I'm gonna pull it down this side over here and as I'm getting into the reflective kind of markings, they don't have to be perfect. They can be skewed. They can have softness to them. So I'm kind of, I don't want to get my hand in the way here, but it might get in the way. I'm going to go on top of here and then maybe get this lightness to just kind of fade out on this piece of water, whatever you imagine it to be. I'm going to do a little bit of a lightness up in here. I think I'm going to put white plus a tiny bit of yellow on my brush. So white and yellow is going to give me a little bit of this reflective kind of shine at the top of this um, of this uh, piece of water droplet in through here. And then I'm gonna repeat this step on the other side. So a little bit of white. I'm gonna go over the top, give myself a highlight over the top. I'm gonna bring this highlight down the side of the um, water droplet, bring it right on top of this colored part. And I'm hardly pressing on my brush right now. I don't have much paint at all. I'm really just giving the, um, the little impression of these highlighted areas. They don't have to be perfect. Just something that's gonna make it look reflective and have lots of shine to it. And then I would just kind of um, give myself one in the middle as well. So just a little bit of white. I'm gonna give the curve of the, um, of the water droplet so you can start kind of on the side and then just swipe it across in a curved line. So I've got it here and then just swipe across in a curved type of line and then you can get it to dissipate over um, on the edge and then just do the same thing on the other one. So a little bit of white on my brush, start over on the right hand side, 
and then just kind of not push hard, just give it a little bit of a curve. And if you went over any of the details that you didn't want to, if I wanted a little bit more brown in there, I just picked up a little bit more brown so I could get that information in there if um, you needed to. Or you could put extra little sparkles. I just put some more white on my brush and you can bring a little bit more highlight up towards that top if you need to amp up that white as it's drying you might feel that you want it to be a little bit brighter that's going to provide a, a more um, shiny looking dew drop or water drop and then you just kind of fiddle with it until you've got all of those little details in there the way that you want and then uh, once you've got this done we're going to utilize this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready All right, so we are onto the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going bottom left on this one with brown paint. So I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a special symbol or however you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It is your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful floral image. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.